when we looked at the outer solar system, we, we realized that while most of the, the very distant objects, these objects beyond Neptune, beyond Pluto, most of these objects, they, they all go around the sun and they're all sort of pointing off in all different directions, but the most distant objects all swing out in one direction. In, in, in a very strange way that shouldn't happen. And we realized that the only way we could get them to all swing in one direction is if there is a massive planet, also very distant in the solar system, keeping them in place while they all go around the sun. And we started looking at this and thinking, this, this, is, this must be either a coincidence or it's uh, caused by something else. It can't be caused by a planet because that's crazy. There are no planets out there. We went from trying very hard to be skeptical that what we were talking about was true to suddenly thinking, oh, this actually might even be true. So the object itself, likely is more massive than the Earth, probably a little bit less massive than Neptune. It sits right in between that terrestrial to giant icy planet range. Its orbit, unlike the orbits of the known planets, is not nearly circular and planar. Instead, it is exceptionally wide, 20 times bigger than the orbit of Neptune. The orbital period of the Earth is, of course, one year. Right? The orbital period of Jupiter, the big player in our solar system, is about 10 years. The orbital period of this putative ninth planet is 20,000 years. We have nothing like it in the solar system, so it's new for us. It is, however, the most common mass of planets that have been found around all of the other stars. People have always looked at all these other planets in this strange mass range and said, wow, I wonder what these are. I don't know what these are because we don't have anything like it in the solar system. Looks like maybe we do. I'm really hoping that as we announce this, people, people start a, uh, a worldwide search to go find this ninth planet. Again, solar stream is coming from the right. That's where the sun is. All the plasma in the blue is being blown backwards. That's a part of our protective shield here. Two hours missing, 537, exactly the same time. Everything goes haywire. Come up to that point again. Everything's coming from the right. Bam. Now the black lines are our field lines. That's our magnetic field lines. Very important. They have now bent backwards at this point. People have talked about Planet X and the Bureau, uh, Planet 7. If there's an object coming in, coming in, would it have orbiting planets? Would it have debris with it? So this is some stuff that piqued my curiosity that I'm sharing with you here. All of this stuff will be linked. I suggest you go to the Caltech thing and watch the whole video. But anyways, I'm going to try and get through this quickly for you. Planet X to really cause mass extinction this month. This is April 9th, 2016. We're going to come down here. Thanks to science, we know that the larger the celestial body, the bigger its gravity, and consequently its ability to affect other smaller bodies around it. We've known of Jupiter's crucial role in protecting us from asteroids for quite some time now. But the mysterious Nibiru could very well do the opposite, and some say there's good reason to believe it. We're going to come down here. A retired astrophysics professor from the University of Louisiana, Daniel Whitmire, is saying Nibiru has all but arrived to our neck of the woods and that the destruction brought about by its gravitational trickery will take place this very April, as it's done numerous times before. Then we're going to come down here. Earlier this year, we started seeing space anomalies manifesting in a small group of objects, which have been taking on a peculiar orbit. Only something 10 times the size of the Earth, as theorized with Nibiru, could influence celestial objects in such a way, according to a study from Caltech. The anomaly was picked up on in the Kuiper Belt, which stretches all the way past Neptune, and it resurrected a 100-year debate. And then we're going to come over here, because again, this stuff just piqued my curiosity, and I wanted to share it with you. This is Fire Official's Reclaim Report of Possible Meteor Strike in Bowie. This is Bowie, Maryland. This was on April 25th, 2016. And we're going to come down here, where this was put out by the Bowie Volunteer Fire Department. Possible meteorite strike behind Scarlet Oak Terrace causing a massive brush fire. And then we're going to come up here and see that when firefighters made it to the site, there was a large pit, which was 12 to 15 feet wide by 5 to 6 feet deep. And the fire spread to adjacent trees and brush and took approximately 15 firefighters four hours to extinguish. But again, they came out and said, no, nope, that should have never been put out. The post should have never listed a meteorite as the cause. Okay. Okay, so now we're coming over here. Was it a meteor solving the mystery of New Jersey's tsunami buoy? April 25th, 2016, a tsunami warning device about 200 miles off the coast of New Jersey went into event mode over the weekend, but there were no giant waves threatening the shore. There was speculation that the drop could have been triggered by a meteor because the Lyrid meteor showers were active during the weekend. There also was speculation a submarine could have struck the buoy. So again, this stuff just piqued my curiosity. Want to share? We're going to move here. Okay, so now here we are, coast to coast. This was from March 30th, 2016. In the first half of the show, retired investigative researcher Bob Fletcher talked about his contention that a rogue planet X or Nibiru is coming our way and the disastrous effects it could have for Earth. He first became suspicious that something was afoot when he discovered that massive amounts of money were being funneled out of the government and the Federal Reserve. He concluded that these funds were surreptitiously used for the construction and stocking of underground facilities that will house the elite and members of the New World Order while the arrival of planet X wreaks cataclysms upon the planet's surface. According to his sources, the knowledge of planet X dates as far back as 1983. So again, I was just like, well, that's interesting. And so we're coming over here because I remember hearing about Rumsfeld 
talking about the missing $2.3 trillion that they couldn't track on September 10th. And we all know what happened on September 11th, 2001. Nobody was talking about the missing money. So I Googled just to see, you know, and there was this one, which brought me over here. So here we are, debunked. Rumsfeld says 2.3 trillion missing from the Pentagon. In 2001, Donald Rumsfeld said, according to some estimates, we cannot track 2.3 trillion in transactions. This has been misinterpreted by many people as 2.3 trillion actually going missing. However, it's really just about the way the money was accounted for. So here's the original source. Go look at it for yourself, right? Okay. Oh, well, golly gee, page not found. Okay, well, there was another link, right? Here, we can also see this. Huh, no input file specified, but yes, there was. So again, this was something, this has gone long, but it really, really piqued my curiosity. And I wanted to share it because, you know, again, you know, trying to put the pieces together. Here we are. Uh, he first became suspicious that something was afoot when he discovered that massive amounts of money were being funneled out of the government. And then, you know, I don't know. This just made me go, hmm, that's interesting. When we looked at the outer solar system, we, we realized that while most of the, the very distant objects, these objects beyond Neptune, beyond Pluto, most of these objects, they, they all go around the sun and they're all sort of pointing off in all different directions, but the most distant objects all swing out in one direction in, in, in a very strange way that shouldn't happen. And we realized that the only way we could get them to all swing in one direction is if there is a massive planet also very distant in the solar system keeping them in place while they all go around the sun. And we started looking at this and thinking, this, this, is, this must be either a coincidence or it's uh, caused by something else. It can't be caused by a planet because that's crazy. There are no planets out there. I went from trying very hard to be skeptical that what we were talking about. When we looked at the outer solar system, we, we realized that while most of the, the very distant objects, these objects beyond Neptune, beyond Pluto, most of these objects, they, they all go around the sun and they're all sort of pointing off in all different directions, but the most distant objects all swing out in one direction in, in, in a very strange way that shouldn't happen. And we realized that the only way we could get them to all swing in one direction is if there is a massive planet, also very distant in the solar system, keeping them in place while they all go around the sun. And we started looking at this and thinking, this, this, is, this must be either a coincidence or it's uh, caused by something else. It can't be caused by a planet because that's crazy. There are no planets out there. I went from trying very hard to be skeptical that what we were talking about was true to suddenly thinking, oh, this actually might even be true. So the object itself likely is more massive than the Earth, probably a little bit less massive than Neptune. It sits right in between 